starved to death. They're they're just uh, they're just dying slowly. Their bones showing through and hoofs cracked. These horses are the lucky ones. That's hard to watch. Get thinner and thinner, ribs showing. Deputies say that it was a tip from a neighbor that brought them here to this property, but when they began searching around, they were shocked by what they found. And we found between 20 and 30 carcasses and varying degrees of decay. Deputies estimate the vet bills to get the animals to full health will cost at least $10,000. A group called Blazes Tribute from Jones, Oklahoma is taking custody of the horses. They will be up for adoption when they are medically cleared. We were catching horses with water at the last seizure. They were so thirsty and had been without water for so long that we were filling buckets where, you know, sometimes you put feed in your buckets to catch the horses. We were putting water in the buckets to catch the horses. And they were drinking that water so fast we couldn't fill the buckets soon, quick enough. It was that des they were that desperate for water. Sometimes we're digging with shovels, digging manure and mud, out away from the doors so we could open doors and get into stalls and get these horses, these animals out of these barns that they've been stuck in for so long. It's just, it's it's hard. You just have to, to stay focused. And, and some people can't do it. Some people show up and they realize this is too much. I can't, ha I can't see this. I can't go in there. I'll, st I'll drive the truck. Some people will do that. Just drive the truck, load them into a trailer. I'll drive the truck, get them where they need to go. And then you guys can unload. I'm not sure I could do what they do uh, with everything that they see and, and everything they've got to go through. Uh, and thank you is not enough uh, for what they do. I have PTSD, okay? And because of their coming effect, when my PTSD starts acting up and whatnot and I start feeling all that, I can walk out in the middle of the pasture and it's almost like they sense it and they'll just come around and sit here and do this right here and just sit here and just pet them and love on them and it has a very calming effect. When you pull into that, that very first place and you see walking skeletons and you see horses starved and neglected at all different levels, it's, it's very emotional. I mean, I, I'd have to say that it was very hard. Um, but I quickly learned that you can't take that time to grieve and, and you know ask why. I just decided we have to do what we have to do to, to get those horses back on track. It was very overwhelming. <laughs> we did it by the grace of God. Um, I say every day, if God leads me to it, he'll lead me through it. And every rescue we've gone into, I mean, that's exactly what has taken place. We've, we've evolved a lot in 13 years. I had no idea that this would be at the magnitude. I mean, we've rescued nearly 1,100 horses in 13 years. I pretty much have dedicated my life to this. So I homeschool my kids, you know, and we, we take care of everything behind the scenes. My husband works a full-time job in order to support the Cross family. Um, and then when he comes home, he goes back to work for, for, for Blazes. So it's definitely, it's a full-time job. And it takes every one of us, you know, from, from our kids to our board members to, to everybody. Our board members and volunteers help us with trucks and trailers. And we go to on location to, you know, to pick up the horses. And so we'll catch them all up, load them up, and then bring them back here. Um, at that point, we immediately have our veterinarian come in and, and do a physical examination and assess all the horses. We bring our farrier in to, you know, trim their feet. Uh, the <laughs> Department of Agriculture will come in and pull blood work in order to test for Coggins to make sure that, you know, they're all negative Coggins. And then from that point on, we just, you know, establish a rehabilitation plan and a schedule for each individual horse and start bringing them back to health. It's not just feeding them. <laughs> I did a lot of volunteer work with the Oklahoma City Animal Welfare Division. I helped a lot with the dogs and the cats, and I didn't realize that they took in horses. We got a new shelter manager, and I asked her, what, what did you do with the horses? And she said, after the cruelty cases are closed, we usually send them to the Purcell Livestock Auction. You know, most of the, the auctions are frequented by kill buyers, and they're sending them and shipping them overseas for slaughter. So I thought, you know, we're taking them from one bad situation and ultimately putting them in the, in the frying pan, so to speak. So she said they had no other outlet for their horses. And I just looked at her and said, you do now. And from that moment on, I decided I was going to rescue horses. I never dreamed it would be to the magnitude that it is today. <laughs> the tractor trailer wreck, it was something totally different than what we normally deal with. You know, we normally deal with neglect cases. Um, but when you see horses that was really destined to be on somebody's dinner plate, 
it brings a whole different aspect to what you just did. The kill buyer lived in Missouri, so once the uh, truck overturned, he had a trailer come and get them, and they hauled them back to Missouri. So we had to, you know, work with them to to allow them to let us have the horses and bring them back to Oklahoma. And I I remember watching them pull into the driveway, and all of the horses was just kind of staring out the window, and you could see in their eyes. It's like they knew immediately when they pulled in that they had a new beginning. So I think that was the one that tore me up the most because they weren't meant to be here. I wasn't gonna do this. <laughs> they wasn't supposed to be here. If that tractor trailer hadn't overturned, those horses would be dead. So looking at them, looking out that trailer window and seeing you could just tell that they, they knew that their life had changed. Everybody said that horses that go to slaughter were no good, or you know, they had no value to life anymore. And each one of those horses had a full value of life. It's sad to think that we slaughter these guys for a foreign industry. You know, we don't eat horses. So why do we ship them over there to slaughter them? So they just, they deserve, a, you know, they de I think they deserve a second chance. I think the mission is just to help them get better, fat, find their forever homes where they'll be loved forever. They're just laying flat like they were dead because it was in the middle of August or June, so it was majorly hot for these guys. And she just comes out here and she thinks she's a horse now. <laughs> I guess it's their beauty. They're just magnificent. They don't really I don't know, I guess they just a mystery. It makes me feel a little blessed that I get to be a part of it and just watch them turn into different kinds of horses, the horses they were meant to be. I'm just seeing what he knows going over this, going over logs, seeing how he's going to follow me. A horse wants a leader. They're a herd animal, so they want a leader. Probably needs more weight, more rides, and he'd be a great horse. And nowadays, we just we get a horse and we want it to be a world champion the next day. We don't want to put the, put the time in it. That's all these guys need, the time. We average at least 100 head a year. It's a hard job. You know, we're, we see the worst. There's a lot of battles with these guys we can't win. And, but when you can adopt that horse off into its family and you can see all the updates and they come to our trail rides and they, those horses are part of their family, there's where it's restored. Medically, we're prepared to treat them. I think emotionally you have to prepare yourself for the things you see here. There have been a lot of times when you think, gosh, we did all that and it, you couldn't save them. And so it's trying. Those days are trying and, and we've definitely shed some tears and talked about it, but then we just have to regroup and refocus and make a difference in the other horses' lives. It's a team. It's a, it's a family, so to speak. And, um, I, I can only imagine what she felt like when she was getting interviewed for that. <laughs> but it was important to us that we had somebody that was going to be just as much involved as we was. I know I've touched many horses' lives. I'd like to think that somewhere at the end of the day I touched many people's lives too.